We're going to have a look now at Proton NMR, and this sort of assumes that you've um, um, uh, looked at the Carbon-13 NMR. Um, first of all, we're just going to deal with some basic information about it, um, and then we're going to look at how we identify equivalent uh, proton environments, equivalent hydrogen environments, uh, and um, uh, integral. In uh, future videos, we'll deal with how um, we actually uh, identify particular spectra, and also uh, how we deal with coupling and um, chemical shift. So um, the first thing we need to know about is when we're talking about proton NMR is that uh, we're talking about NMR involving um, hydrogen, um, or, or, or which or, um, has a spin of a half, which means like carbon-13, um, it gives a signal on a NMR spectrum. It's in a different frequency range um, to carbon-13 NMR. Um, in terms of some of the key ideas, uh, we're going to see this word integral used. Um, integral uh, tells us the number of hydrogen atoms or protons in a particular environment. Um, obviously we're interchanging this word proton and hydrogen here. Technically, it's not a proton because it's a hydrogen atom that's uh, covalently bonded to a carbon atom, but we're interested in the nucleus of that hydrogen atom, so that's why we're going to call it proton NMR, but hydrogen NMR is, is fine as well. So, this word integral here will tell us the number of hydrogen atoms in a particular environment. When we have a look at some examples in a minute, it will hopefully be clearer uh, so you can work out um, what's happening there. Um, obviously, we need to use a solvent. Um, any of our components before they can go into an NMR tube and into an NMR spectrometer they need to be dissolved in some sort of solvent. Now the problem is most solvents for example uh, this uh, solvent is trichloromethane or also called chloroform um, there's a hydrogen in here and there's going to be a significantly larger amount of chloroform <coughs> compared to uh, any of the other hydrogens uh, in the compound that's dissolved in it. So we have to use a solvent that doesn't um, interact with or doesn't produce a peak in the NMR spectrum. So we use what are called deuterated solvents, CdCl3. So when we talk about deuterated solvents here, uh, the D is the isotope of hydrogen. So it's a uh, a form of chloroform that's been um, produced specifically with no hydrogen atoms but with deuterium which is the um, non-spin active uh, or, or non-NMR active form of hydrogen so it won't produce a peak on our spectrum we talked last time about the need for a standard this time again we use TMS tetramethylsilane. I talked about that on the last video, but I'm going to talk about the structure of it here now and why we particularly use this one. So we have a silicon atom and three, sorry, four methyl groups around the outside of it. Now the reason we choose this is because it's a very stable compound and also it means that these hydrogens as well as the carbons are very shielded. You get some in positive inductive effect um, electrons a bit density being pushed away from the silicon towards the um, uh, methyl groups which means these are the, some of the most highly shielded hydrogens there are which means it will give us um, a chemical shift um, obviously we standardize it uh, of zero um, also we'll see later that each of these carbon environments because of the symmetry in this molecule are equivalent so it gives us a single very very sharp peak um, we've talked about integral obviously we're going to be talking about chemical shift I'm just going to mention it here um, we'll do a, a whole video and a whole session specifically on that uh, but chemical shift again uh, we measured in parts per million and it's determined by the amount of shielding around uh, particular hydrogen atoms which again is itself determined by um, electronegative elements or how the proximity 
uh, to electronegative elements. Um, let's have a look at some uh, specific examples now. I'll just leave that there so you've got the whole sheet if you want to pause the video at any point. So let's have a look at some examples now. So I'm going to take us through some examples on here and we're going to be looking at the number of proton environments and also their integral. So this compound here, if we have a look at our um, hydrogens, we've got hydrogen here, here, here and here. There's no real symmetry as such in this molecule apart from the fact that obviously um, that, that if we drew this out properly that there would be symmetry around this carbon atom. So what we have here is this as one hydrogen environment, hydrogen environment here, one here and one here. So I should really have just circled the hydrogen there. So in fact, if I label these as A, B, C and D, we can see that there are four different hydrogen environments or four different proton environments. Um, in terms of the integral, we'd expect A to have an integral of 3, B would be 2, C would be 2 and D would be 1. The reason I've identified these is there's three hydrogens in this environment. Two hydrogens in this, two in this and one in this environment. Let's have a look at another example. We're going to see benzene here. Now, um, at a higher level, we can actually talk about there being different hydrogen environments in benzene, but it, it's a little bit complicated for, um, uh, for the level we're at. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk about both uh, ways of talking about this. So don't forget that um, in this benzene ring, there is a hydrogen here, 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 and here, which means there's actually five protons, five hydrogens in that environment. There isn't one on here because this has been substituted uh, by this acetyl group here. So if we just call this now, um, all of the hydrogens in here, we're just going to call uh, environment A. Uh, there's no hydrogens on this atom, there's no hydrogens on this atom, which means we can now our next hydrogen environment is here, which we call B, and this one which we call C, uh, which means we've got three environments. Um, a would have an integral of 5, B would have an integral of uh, 2, and C would have an integral of 3. So I'll just label those again so we know what that word means, integral. Integral means the number of hydrogen atoms in that particular environment. If I wanted to uh, resolve what's happening in A a little bit more, there are in fact um, there is in fact a hydrogen environment here, which I'm just going to call AA. Uh, the hydrogen environment here, which I'll call AB, uh, and a hydrogen environment here. So technically there are three uh, distinguishable hydrogen environments in the benzene ring, uh, but they're beyond what we need to be able to do at A level. Let's look at our example here. Now there's some symmetry. There is a mirror line of symmetry down this part of the molecule here. What that means is we have... Um, this environment here and this environment here are equivalent to each other because of the uh, symmetry in the molecule. So I'm going to call this environment A. And then obviously because that symmetry is there for environment A, we'd have the same for environment B. So there are in fact only two environments present in this molecule. A would have an integral of 4 and B would have an integral of 6. However, we'd often see those uh, reduced down to uh, a 2 to 3 ratio. So we need to be able to um, work out hydrogen environments for skeletal diagrams uh, of molecules as well. So if we have a look at this example of a molecule, then at this point here we've got a CH3. So there is um, a, a hydrogen environment there. Uh, this carbon atom would have no hydrogens attached to it. Obviously, there's no hydrogens attached to that oxygen. And then we have an environment B here. Okay, Environment B is going to have one hydrogen in it because there's three substituent groups off of this carbon atom here. So I'm going to just put these here for one moment and say that A, we'd have three uh, protons, one, two, three. And environment B, we'd just have one. Now, there is a rotational axis of symmetry around here. Um, if we uh, if we rotate around here, uh, then uh, we can rotate uh, 
according to this diagram 180 degrees uh, wouldn't actually be 180 but it does mean that there is some symmetry here so the hydrogens attached to these methyl groups here are equivalent to each other so that gives us environment C three six and that's worth six hydrogen atoms so it would have an integral of six so this molecule because of the rotation of symmetry around this carbon atom means that we've got three environments um, I've included uh, double bonds here just for completeness uh, we're unlikely to see them really at A level because there's, uh, there's some complications uh, called, uh, when we work out the coupling uh, but this molecule here just to be absolutely clear um, because there is no rotation around this carbon to carbon double bond it's fixed in position that means these hydrogens are not equivalent to each other so this molecule would have four environments a, B, C and D. A, B and C would all have an integral of 1 and D would have an integral of 3 but we're unlikely to encounter them at A level really. So there are six examples um, and I'll pull up. If you want to pause the video and or before you pause the video um, copy the molecules down work out the number of hydrogen environments and the integral of the hydrogens in that environment. If you want to pause the video for these three, and then if you want to pause the video for these three, I'll now go through the answers. So, question number one we've got um, a line of symmetry down here, which means that we only really have two hydrogen environments this environment here, which we'll call A. And this environment here which we call B so we've got two environments A has an integral of 6 B has an integral of 2 which we could say uh, has a ratio of 3 to 1 um, for 2 here um, we've got one environment due to the uh, benzene ring but I'm going to uh, we can t t resolve that a little bit further and we've got another environment here due to the CH3 and we have another environment here due to the CH3. Now with this particular environment, uh, because if we drew this molecule out slightly differently, then you'll see that there is actually a line of symmetry down here. So if we wanted to work out the number of hydrogen atoms uh, environments in here, then we label this as B, we've labeled this as C, and what I'm going to do now is actually um, label these hydrogens here as A1, a1 and these as A2. So in fact we've got four environments although for A level we might only really be thinking about there being three because we can say the benzene ring are all the same but we'll go with the four environment version for now um, and we can say that A1 has an integral of two, A2 has an integral of two, uh, B has an integral of three and C has an integral of three. The answer to question three here, there is a rotational axis of symmetry around this carbon atom here, which means that all of these hydrogens are in the same environment. And then we have environment B and C. So for this molecule, there are three environments. A has an integral of nine, B has an integral of two, C has an integral of three. Example number four, um, all of these um, bonds can rotate, so there is actually um, an axis of symmetry there. Um, and also we need to, um, uh, you, so anything we find on this side is going to be the same on this side. So we've got a CH3 on the end here, we'll call that environment A. Uh, there will be one hydrogen atom on all of these, we'll call that environment B. And there'll be a hydrogen atom or two hydrogen atoms on each of these. So we have three environments. Environment A is worth or has an integral of six. Environment B, one and one has an uh, integral of two. And then environment C um, also has an integral, uh, so it has an integral of four. So we could call that three, one, two. Example five, 
we've got a nice axis of symmetry down there which means the two hydrogen atoms on each of these are equivalent the two hydrogen atoms on each of these are equivalent and then this is an environment by itself so we have three environments a b both two and c has an sorry a and b have an integral of four um, two on each so two two is four two two is four um, and then c has an integral of one uh, and then we have a look at this final uh, molecule here uh, there is uh, this bond can rotate here which means that the protons in this environment are equivalent to each other so we'll call these environment a um, there's no hydrogen on there there's no hydrogen on there which means that there are in fact only two environments in this molecule uh, six and three so uh, yeah So, um, that's it. Thank you very much.